is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Greetings, cadets. In this episode, we're going to solder up a pre-programmed AT Tiny microprocessor into a final circuit. As an example, the AT Tiny was programmed with a sketch for the Buck Rogers Starfighter, which can be downloaded from a link in the description below. However, I want to emphasize that this particular permanent circuit can actually be used for any AT Tiny running whatever sketch it has been programmed with. The process of programming the AT Tiny is outlined in the previous chapter, which has been updated for the latest Arduino IDE. At first we'll create a prototype circuit for the sketch on a breadboard, which will include an external 5 volt power supply for the AT Tiny. Once we verify that the sketch is running and everything is working, we can solder up all the components into a final circuit. As a side note, two sections of code in the Buck Rogers sketch, which control the engine flame effects and the weapons fire subroutine, were sent to me a few years ago by my friend Salvador Cortez. These were originally intended for a Cylon Raider, but it just goes to show how versatile these two effects are, as they can be included in any Starfighter sketch, which may require guns blazing and engines roaring. It's always a good idea to create a prototype of a circuit to make sure we have enough power and that the sketch is running as intended. We need a breadboard and some jumper wires. For the 5 volt external power supply we need a barrel jack, an N4001 rectifier diode, a 100 microfarad and a 10 microfarad capacitor, and an LM7805 linear voltage regulator. For the Starfighter prototype circuit, we need a pre-programmed AT Tiny 85, 6 3mm LEDs, and 6 470 ohm resistors. Following the same procedure as in Chapter 10, we can construct a simple 5 volt bare bones power supply. We can trace the current flow from the positive of the barrel jack to the rectifier diode, across the gutter of the breadboard, past the 100 microfarad capacitor, and into the voltage regulator. From there the output leg of the voltage regulator is connected past the 10 microfarad capacitor into the positive rail of the breadboard. The negative rail of the breadboard gets connected to the negative leg of the 10 microfarad capacitor across the voltage regulator and 100 microfarad capacitor back to the barrel jack with a jumper wire. We add the AT Tiny to the breadboard with its legs on either side of the middle divider. We connect leg 4 of the AT Tiny to the negative rail of the breadboard by means of a jumper wire. Leg 8 of the AT Tiny gets connected to the positive rail of the breadboard. Next we insert 6 3mm LEDs into the breadboard. The two blue LEDs will simulate the engines and the orange ones the laser fire. The red LED is a strobing light and the green one is a flashing light which will animate some of the cockpit lights by means of fiber optic filaments. The negative leg of each LED gets connected to the negative rail of the breadboard by means of a 470 ohm resistor. Because there are two LEDs for the engine, we need to split the AT Tiny output between the two of them by means of a parallel connection. We bridge the positive legs of the LEDs with an empty row on the breadboard by means of two jumper wires. Then we connect leg 6 of the AT Tiny, which is output 1 on the sketch and capable of pulse width modulation, to this empty row on the breadboard, effectively splitting its output signal between the two LEDs. We connect leg 7 of the AT Tiny to the positive leg of the first laser cannon LED and leg 2 of the AT Tiny to the positive leg of the second laser cannon LED. When we run the sketch, you will see how clever the laser firing routine is, which Salvador created. The laser cannons discharge at random intervals, yet they always react in unison, but each with an independent rate of fire. Leg 5 of the AT Tiny, pin 0 in the sketch, is also a pulse width modulation pin and gets connected to the positive leg of the red strobe LED by means of a jumper wire. Leg 3 of the AT Tiny gets connected to the positive leg of the green LED, which will be our flashing light. 
we connect our external power supply to the barrel jack. In this example, I am using a 9 volt 450 milliamp adapter to run the circuit. Our voltage regulator can handle any input within the range of 7 to 35 volts, but our capacitors are rated at a maximum of 25 volts, so our voltage input range is 7 to 25 volts. Now that we have a working prototype, we can duplicate the design onto a permanent circuit board. First off, I do a dry run by positioning the components on the board to see how much space they take up. You'll notice a large gap between the voltage regulator transistor and the second capacitor. This type of transistor has been designed to bend over and lay flat on the circuit board, which we will need to do to fit the finished circuit board within the body of the model. After determining the approximate size and shape of the final circuit board, we can cut a piece which is slightly larger than we need, just to be on the safe side. When soldering, I start methodically, one component at a time. This way, I don't have a whole bunch of metal legs getting in the way. The best method I have found is to start from the positive input and arrange the components individually along the path of the current. We add the diode to the board, making sure it's facing the right way around, as current flow is unidirectional across this component. We bend its legs slightly to hold it in place. Some solder gets applied to each side of the diode to fix it permanently onto the board. The solder cools down almost immediately, and we can clip the legs of the diode. Next we insert the 100 microfarad capacitor, making sure that the positive leg is close to the diode. We solder up both legs and clip them off as before. The current needs to flow across this positive leg, and a quick way to ensure this is to bridge the connections between diode and capacitor. We apply a bit of extra solder to create the small bridge. We repeat all of the previous steps with the voltage regulator, keeping the positive and negative legs in line with those of the capacitor. Basically, it's a simple process of reproducing the breadboard onto the circuit board. One could even pluck out the components from the breadboard and plug them into the final circuit, but it is handy to preserve the breadboard prototype as a source of reference. As the circuit needs to fit into a narrow space on the Starfighter model, we bend the transistor over so that it lies flat on the circuit board and push it backwards slightly to create a neat fold. After we soldered up the second capacitor, we can add the programmed AT Tiny to the board. Two diagonally opposite legs of the AT Tiny can be bent, as this helps to hold the small microcontroller steady on the board while soldering. It is during the next phase of the project that the breadboard prototype is extremely useful, as it makes it way easier to wire up all of the components. As you can see, I've already wired up the circuit, but I'm going to show you step by step how I did it using the breadboard prototype. The current flows from the barrel jack to the first leg of the diode. I soldered a long piece of red wrapping wire to this point on the circuit board. The current flows over the diode, and, if you'll remember the bridge we made there earlier, across the positive leg of the first capacitor. From there, it enters the one side of the voltage regulator, and exits as a 5 volt power source across the positive leg of the second capacitor. From there, it flows to the positive rail of the breadboard, which is connected to leg 8 of the AT Tiny. We can accomplish this by soldering a single red wire from the capacitor to the AT Tiny on the circuit board. Now, starting back on the return path, we need to use a long piece of black wrapping wire, which will perform the same function as the negative rail of the breadboard. We solder this to the negative leg of the second capacitor and connect leg 4 of the AT Tiny to the same contact point. This gets joined to the negative leg of the voltage regulator to the negative leg of the first capacitor, and then straight out to the barrel jack using another long black wire. We attach wires to all of the outputs on the AT Tiny, trying to use as many of the same colors as we did in the prototype circuit. This just saves time later when adding LEDs to the model. 
With the permanent circuit completed, we need to do some quality control to make sure the final product is working as intended. We connect the negative output from the new circuit board to the negative rail of the breadboard and wire up all of the LEDs. Once we plug in an external power supply, everything should be running properly. If one of the LEDs isn't working, there may be a bad solder connection on the new circuit board, or the input wire from the AT Tiny may be touching something it shouldn't, causing a short circuit. If none of the lights work, we need to troubleshoot the whole circuit board by carefully retracing the path of the power flow and compare this with the breadboard. As you can see, once we have a working prototype, it's fairly quick and easy to create a working circuit board. And by building it from scratch, we can easily modify its shape and size to best fit the space we need it to occupy. So long, and thank you for watching.